Welcome back to the dish. Test of the champion about a week and a half away. Triple crown season coming to an end, but a lot of opportunities coming up, including one this weekend we'll touch on with the Paddock Prince himself. And of course, some Belmont Stakes discussion. And David, uh, I'm pretty excited that Forte seems to be uh, at, I don't want to say his peak, that remains to be seen, but it seems like he's coming into this the way Todd Pletcher would want. And it certainly spices things up for me. Yeah, I think it's very interesting. A horse running ten, off a 10 week break in the Belmont, but Pletcher's so good in the Belmont. I feel like he would have a good gauge on a horse if he thinks he can handle this kind of layoff in a race like that. I also think the p- pace in that race will be interesting. It only seems like National Treasure is the only horse with any pace. Forte's not super slow out of the gate. He didn't have a good post at Gulfstream, so he was way farther back than usual. In a mile and a half race with horses like Angel of Empire, Tap at Trice, a lot of slower paced horses out of the gate. Tap um, Forte could be a horse that off a layoff could be sitting pretty fresh, be sitting right, not on the lead, but second or third maybe actually. And do you think he'll be the favorite? Um, I don't know. I don't know that answer. I think him, Tap at Trice, and Angel of Empire are going to be very close in odds. I don't know. I th- I still think in my head Tappet Trice might be the favorite, but that might just be me thinking everybody said he's a Belmont horse for so long. He probably won't be. Um, I, I don't know, actually. Yeah. I was, If I had to make a line for that race, I don't know. I may be Forte 3-1 to one morning line, 7-2. to two. Well, it's uh, funny you should say that because uh, one of our reporters actually did talk to David, uh, and I've not read the article yet, but we'll put a link in there to that because – he did talk about uh, the line. I agree with you. I think it's a tough one to make. I think if Tappet Trice had maybe finished how Angel of Empire or Dis- uh, Disarm did, he would unquestionably be the favorite. But he never, ever looked like he would be in the frame in the Derby. And, you know, we had the issues we thought he might or others did. I was willing to ignore him to play him. But uh, it, it just wasn't overly impressive, admittedly. But... Now we get a mile and a half, as you noted, Pletcher in the Belmont. There's a lot There's a lot more to like now. Yeah, Tappet tries to not run well in the Derby, but if you watch his races in the uh, before the Derby, he does not handle kickback, and he never got outside in that race. He was just stuck getting getting dirt kicked in his face. He he didn't really run once he got in the clear, but he was having a grind for from so far back so early the entire race. He just never really got in a rhythm. His last work was really good also. I'm sure everybody knows that Pletcher said it was – an outstanding work. So I think him, I would say him or Forte is the favorite. I'll probably go with Forte. Though. I'd probably lean towards Forte as being the favorite because at the end of the day, he's still a two year old champion. He's two for right. two this year. Not he rad. beat Mage. Mage won the Derby, even though Forte didn't get the run. People are going to play the common opponent game. So I would probably say he's a favorite. Yeah, plus plus Irad certainly. Uh, not sure how much that affects the money in a Belmont type pool, but another reason people notice him for sure. Does that give you any thought that Angel of Empire might be bettable here if the two Pletchers take money? Um, I'm not Angel of Empire's biggest fan. I thought right. he ran. I thought he ran well in the Derby, but he also got a good trip in the Derby, and the pace was hot. So. I don't know. He is actually maybe a horse that could be closer to the pace than people think. I saw – I don't know if it was Brad Cox. It might have been Brad Cox on Twitter, so don't quote me on this. I think they said he has more speed than what he's been showing. So maybe in a race like the Belmont with not as much pace signed on, going a mile and a half, he could be a horse that could be closer. But I'm just really – I think he's a really good horse, but I'm not his biggest fan, and I wouldn't take anything below 5-1 to one on him. And that's just my mm-hmm. personal opinion if I was betting him straight out. I, if he was 7 or 8-1, to one, I would definitely think about it. Right. Yeah, I love the consistency. I mean, he won a 50 and 100 point race, one of only a few to do that, and then showed up in the Derby, uh, was third with, uh, you know, really the two in front of him had not. Uh, two fills won his final prep, but didn't win the 50 point race. Mage won neither of them. So Angel of Empire, I appreciate the consistency. But like you, it just seems like you're always taking a short ish price on a horse who's never truly dazzled, but uh, it'll, it'll be price dependent for me. If he gets completely ignored, he's playable. If he doesn't, he's not. Uh, the other one from the Cox Barn hit show is actually who I'm a little interested in. He's out of a tap at Mare. Uh, he's by Candy Ride, so uh, not really nervous about the mile and a half. And the Derby wasn't like awesome, but he was fifth. I thought he ran his race. He 
paired on Ragazin, his wood memorial. So if he, to me, if he handles the mile and a half and can move forward off the Derby, he's there at a much, much bigger price than the others. I couldn't agree more. That was my next um, point about the race itself. I like Hit Show much more than um, Angel of Empire based on the price you'll probably get. I, I do think people are going to see the tap it and tap it's done well in the Belmont. So he might be a little bit of an underlay, but I'm with you. If he's eight to 10 to one, probably in that range, I would guess. He's great value in this race and he should have no distance issues in here. Um, yeah, no, I'm I, with you. On I that. think it'll be a little higher. I mean, we haven't mentioned the Preakness winner yet. He's going to take money. I don't know how he's going to get bet. Nice. Bob Baffert and he won the Preakness. No, no, I know. I'm not saying that. It's just interesting because he Oh, won. you don't know. I got you now. Yeah. 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 I don't know how they're going to bet yeah. him because it could the be Preakness four to one. It could be eight to one. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I feel like if he could be anywhere between five to one to nine to one, I don't really know. It wasn't the strongest Preakness. He did walk on the lead. He might get to walk on the lead again, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about him in general. Well, I will say I really hope, and it, it seems like with the three-week break, it dissipates a little bit. We haven't talked since the Preakness. I mean, it's two years in a row now. I cannot believe the win odds on a few of these horses in the Preakness, and I'd, I'd love to see it happen again in the Belmont. New York betters make, are much smarter. Yeah, I mean, if Il Miracolo was 12-1, to 1, just be that much better on the others, but, man – I mean, what that, was that? What that uh, betting? Did he? Was it just the the concert in the infield? Everybody was betting Chris, and I can't imagine that was enough. But I mean, two years in a row now, so maybe that's it. Who was the horse two years ago that everybody was betting in the pre? Well, last year Fenwick was like ten yeah, to one for Fenwick. A long time. Uh, yeah, coming off like a Tampa win or something, and the rain in the bluegrass and it was if terrible. That, yeah. Oh yeah, it was in the bluegrass. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would love to see in the Belmont, but like you said, just with, with that big day sort of vibe and all the other races and the attention, it doesn't seem to happen as much. But uh, we'll certainly look forward to, uh, I'm guessing, uh, everyday coverage from here on out at Belmont, right? Yeah, absolutely. We got very interesting race this weekend. It's a really good weekend for the three-year-old turfers. You got the Pin Mile Friday night. You got the Penine Ridge at Belmont Saturday. And then you have the listed Audubon. At Churchill Downs, who features Web Slinger that won the American Turf. So this weekend has good racing in Belmont, good three-year-old turf racing across the country. And then I was looking um, next week, they switched up the – I correct me if I'm wrong on this. They switched up the races a little bit for the Belmont Stakes Festival. The Acorn's now on Friday. The Acorn wasn't on Friday last yeah, year, Yeah, that, that's a switch up. Yeah, yeah, so the – the races start on Thursday next week with stakes races. And then they put the two-year-old races that were originally on Thursday, the Astoria and the Tremont. They're on Sunday now. So they move some of the stakes around for basically a four-day weekend of stakes. Well, definitely don't like the Sunday move because I'm I'm checked out. It depends. You weren't you weren't checked out last year after Skippy. <laughs> I don't think I played some, the next day though. Oh. You got your Skippy this year? Is Hit Show your Skippy? I guess hit show. Yeah. I mean, well, a tap of trice I picked in the Derby. So that's sort of the pet, but hoping hit, I'm hoping tis the bomb shows up in the Manhattan. Is he nominated? I don't know. Let's see. I got it right here. All right. So, so sorry. Not nominated. No. And this is a brutal field for a grade one. I'm looking at right now, but the, um, the grade three winner tis the bomb is not nominated. That would have been his field. Is he not running at Churchill forward. this weekend? Is he what? Is he not running at Churchill in one of those random listed stakes? I didn't see his name. I mean, he ran last week. <laughs> Does that matter? No. Nah, Rattle and Rolls running in the blame. <laughs> That's he true. Just, he just won the um, Pimlico Special. Pimlico, still don't know how that horse won the race. That did not look like he won live. No, there was he, no point. It looked like he was going to win that race. Got his nose down. So yeah, no. So no tis the bomb in the Manhattan. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah, he'll he'll be back. The Met Mile looks good though. A Met lot Mile of those races really good. You run and charge it back. See your tis the bomb. I don't know because his best race by far is at one turn. He's getting back to one turn and he's not going to be three to five in this race or right. one to one. He's going to be. I mean, he's got to be at least eight to ten to one off his last race. Well, especially with Cody in there and Taba. Taba, yeah. 
and Zandon. I mean, I know Zandon's not a world beater, but for some reason, people like Zandon. I don't know. Yeah, no, they. It's a lot going on in there. And you got Repo Rocks and White Barrio. That's they right. Might, they might have so much extra punch in the lane. <laughs> punch? Is that what we call it? No, they might. I mean, Repo Rocks is, I mean, his last race was yeah. impressive again. You, they f- figured something out. Feed regimen. That's what it is. All right. Well, all your picks, but also the Penine Ridge you mentioned, we have a write-up for that, so we'll throw a link uh, in here. Very good race. And what was the other link I said? Oh, uh, Aragona's line for the Belmont. What did did you look at it off the top of your head? No, I don't. I don't even. I think it's going up today. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we will. Uh, we'll dish for the big Belmont card. I'm sure there'll be some other opportunities to touch on without giving away the store. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I would definitely say this uh, is a race to look forward to. Yeah, the hype for that whole weekend is exciting because of all the good races. I'm interested to see how the Acorn is going a mile and a 16th this year, not seven furlongs. Um, just oh, a lot of make good it races. Eight and a half? Huh? The Acorn's eight and a half? Yeah, it's a mile and a 16th now. Oh. They tried to make it make it like that, then the coaching club Oaks, and then the Amer- um, the right. uh, Alabama. So they tried I to. I like it. Yeah. I don't know who's running in it, but it'll. Be a good, be a lot of good yeah. races, to be honest, as everybody knows. Nope. All right. Well, we'll look forward to that and uh, appreciate the time. Good luck.